Are you wondering if your kid has a vision problem? In this video, we're gonna go over some of the main signs to know if your child is having a hard time seeing coming up. Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Aaron Smith, practicing optometrist in the state of Utah, and let's get right into some signs of vision problems in children. Signs that a child may have a vision problem can be subtle, but there are a few things parents and caregivers can look for. Some common indicators might include squinting or closing one eye. Sometimes parents or even teachers notice that a child is squinting when in the classroom, especially when the child is sitting toward the back of the classroom. At home, when a kid is watching TV or playing a video game, they might squint during these times, specifically if the vision or eyesight is out of focus. When I was about 10 years old, I myself began to notice that the board at school was blurry. My parents took me in to see the local optometrist, and sure enough, I needed glasses in order to improve my own eyesight at that time. Another sign that a child might have vision problems is that they might be sitting too close to the TV or starting to hold books very close to their face. Sometimes the act of moving something closer to the eyes or moving an object closer to us can be a sign that a child or an adult is starting to become more nearsighted, meaning that their far away vision is more blurry or out of focus while their near vision is more clear. The next sign that a kid might have a vision problem is that they're rubbing their eyes more frequently or even complaining of headaches. In fact, one of the number one symptoms of uncorrected farsightedness in children and adults is headaches. And if the eyes are tired from the strain that blurry vision can cause, then oftentimes a child can be seen rubbing their eyes as a result. The next sign that a child might have a vision problem might be that they are oftentimes tilting their head or turning it to one side when looking at something straight ahead. Usually if this is the case, then it would be wise to have your optometrist look at your child's eyes and check for an ocular misalignment. To better understand this concept, you have to understand first that we all have many muscles that are surrounding the eyes that are responsible for moving the eyes in very specific directions. In fact, the movements must be so specific and so accurate or else our vision will instantly become double and go completely out of focus even. But sometimes during development, the eye muscles that are surrounding the eyes become attached to the outside of the eye in such a way that it requires that those eyes have to move a little bit further to converge or look at a specific object with both eyes together compared to the next person who, when their eyes developed, the muscles were inserted in such a way to where they don't have to move their eyes as far for both eyes to point at an object, if that makes sense. So the alignment system can be more strained in one individual and less strained in another when looking at the exact same object. Parents, teachers, and eye care providers can tell if eye alignment becomes a problem when they occasionally see an eye wander inward or outward while the child is involved in some visually demanding activity. And if a child always has a head tilt or has a constant head turn slightly to one side or the other while looking straight ahead like I am right here, it could be a sign that the eyes are misaligned and the child may need eyeglasses or even vision therapy and possibly even an alignment surgery to correct it. The final sign that a child might have a vision problem is that he or she avoids activities that require good visual acuity, such as reading or sports. If a child exhibits any of these signs, it's important to schedule an eye exam with an optometrist. During the exam, the optometrist will use various tests and techniques to assess a child's visual acuity. These tests might include visual acuity testing. This measures how well a child can see letters and shapes at a certain distance. Refraction, this determines if a child has a refractive error such as nearsightedness, farsightedness, or astigmatism. Now, you might be wondering, well, my child's only two years old, so how will the optometrist ever be able to find out the prescription? My two-year-old will never understand which one's better, one or two, during that test. But I want you to know that the prescription for eyeglasses can still be found by your optometrist through a technique called retinoscopy, where the optometrist uses a special type of light emitting instrument called a retinoscope, some really cool lenses, some eye drops, and some fun objects or cartoons to find the prescription without any responses from your child. Question of the day, have you ever seen a small baby or a toddler wearing prescription glasses before? Let us know in the comments below, and by the way, take a second and smash the like button if you're getting any value out of this video. And another test that your eye care provider might do to test your child's eyes would be eye teaming and tracking testing. This evaluates how well a child's eyes work together to focus on objects and track moving objects. And since we know how well we can see as a reflection of our eye health, your child's optometrist will take a close look at the eyes front to back to make sure the child doesn't have any serious eye conditions that need to be treated or monitored. Now, if a vision problem is detected, the optometrist may prescribe corrective lenses such as glasses or contact lenses. 
They may also recommend vision therapy, which involves specific exercises to improve eye teaming and eye tracking skills. In some cases, surgery may be necessary to correct certain eye conditions. So in conclusion, it's important for parents, teachers, caregivers to pay close attention to signs that a child might have a vision problem. Early detection and treatment by an optometrist can help ensure that your child's visual system is on track for proper development. If you have any questions about anything that I covered in this video, leave me a question in the comments below. My handle can be found in the description below, and I'll see you in the next video.